Hey, Brandon. Morning, Ellen. How are you? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. I've been okay. saying uh, it's the opposite for quite a while now. I know. In and out of so many Zooms, you just kind of. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many Zooms we've all done in the last year. <laughs> I don't even want to. are always going to repeat. <laughs> I know. Uh... Well, I just got my computer back up and running. I've been missing my Zooms for the last couple of days because. Uh, I actually have a new laptop too. I, I dropped mine, or not me, but my two-year-old decided to throw it. And uh, it definitely showed me that the, that the Apple Macs are not uh, oh, proof <laughs> Yeah, well, my, mine just froze and I didn't know what to do. It's first time I had to call my, my girl. She comes over here. Right. You know, at least once a week, and, and just worked with me on different things. You know. Yeah, it's good to have your IT person. Yeah, yeah, and and so she's a med uh, a med student. So oh, good. Hey, as long as they're young and they know how to work the the tech. Oh, stuff. she can do anything. The Jasmine, are you home from the hospital? He's like, right. I got a computer to, to you know to operate right. He goes, right. okay, I'll I'll. Uh, she's lived too far. She goes, I'll, I'll come over. Nice. Um, in ten minutes. Had. That's great. What did you do? I worked <laughs> hours. It's, it's so natural to them. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it makes me feel like I, I mean I've come a long way, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah. All that stuff can be delegated. I feel like, you know, you just stick to the true skill sets. Yeah, you, you just you just you can't just be uh you have to take you have to take take your time. You yeah. Know? Patience, something yeah. like that because I've got too many things doing, right? Okay. You gotta have you gotta have patience for that. Yeah. Uh, so you know she's 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 my dog walker, my <laughs> take care of my dog of the weekend if I wanted to do something. She fixes my computer. She's uh she's pretty amazing. Nice. Kristen, your hair's getting longer. Yep. <laughs> Looks great. You're on mute. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hey, how's it going? Good. Well, for the first time uh, in, in, in way over a year, uh, I've seen the refinance market start to slow down. <laughs> yeah. It's like we can all come up for air now. Oh my gosh. It's like it just put the brakes on. Yeah. Well, well title officers, when they see, receive a deal, they still have to put the same amount of work into yeah. any, any deal, purchase or refi. Right. So when a refi slow down, it, it gives them better quality time to spend on, you know, purchases yes. and other more important things. Yeah, that last year was a, was a, was a frenzy. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, it's okay. Josh, Josh is running late, go figure. So. Is, did he go to the gym again? <laughs> no, I think he's like- Josh, made... late? Never, that never <laughs> happens. <laughs> and his, his, his ringer won't go off. <laughs> yeah. Either. Oh, he just wants to give us some time. <laughs> run, run the meeting ourselves, right? Uh, so we can come come back in and go. Okay, party's over. <laughs> time to focus. Everybody have a good uh, holiday weekend. Yeah, it was uh, a lot more meaningful this year. I feel like. Yeah. It's good though. You know, it's it's not. More perspective and things for people to appreciate, think about. Took me this a second to figure out why no one would grant me my showing request for Sunday, but then I figured. Oh, it out. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh yeah. My clients didn't seem to care. <laughs> right, of course not. Your clients just want to get the house. Right. Yeah. Like, no. Why is no one saying yes? It's like, <laughs> oh, it's a holiday. Got it. Yeah, but there was still, I mean, I did a showing. I was literally cooking 
cooking a brunch and had to run out for a showing at yeah. one o'clock. Oh. So. Oh, it's so darn competitive right now. You know, it's just, it's really difficult. Everybody's yeah. just so frustrated because it's. And it's crazy because you're only getting 15, like literally they're scheduling 15 minute windows for, for showing. So you have these buyers needing to make, you know, or, or do a die decision. Right yeah. then and there. I'm 15 yeah. minutes seeing a house. So that, that's, yeah. that's hard to do. Yeah. Well, that's why it's really good to be backup or backup backup because they're moving so quick without being 100% sure that we're seeing a lot of those first time buyers um, back out and then it's the second or third that's getting it. Yeah. My, so my buyers are definitely getting, I have this one couple and we've put in probably about five offers already. And, they, you know, they just get kept getting beaten out in price. And it's, yeah. You know, you got to be prepared. That's why, you know, as an agent, you really have to, when you're ready to take them out, just, you got to. Well, the problem is, you know, I mean, these are properties that are starting at like under one, one, and they're going to, you know, one, five. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a crazy market. It is. They say it's going to, you know, even with 3%, which I don't think is any big deal. Um, you know, we still have a lot of activity. And even if, even if they've raised them even a tad more, I think it's, it's still going to create that. Yeah, you will just be up against 10 offers instead of 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not complaining, but you know, it, it is, it is the market. I mean, it's a market that we should all be very, very grateful for, you know. Yeah. I almost forgot what it's like to see like a buyer's market. It's been so long. Although I, I do have those memories of the short sale era. Hey, it's easy to tell if your buyer's serious or not now, if you should take the oh, time. Yeah. Them. If they're like, totally. I want a deal, I'm like, well, talk to me in a year or two. Yeah. <laughs> a deal? A deal? Yeah. How do you spell that? Talk to me in a year or two. <laughs> so while, I mean, we're waiting for Josh and waiting for everything to start, I might as well just like go over some things um, and people could like listen in. Uh, I was talking to Kristen this morning, you know, we have to make sure our, our, our agents know about our office policies, procedures, um, and especially when it comes to listing agreements. So when you put something in the MLS, you gotta make sure you are uploading it, uh, the listing agreement into command. It's a simple, you have to start an opportunity, you, um, and just upload that listing agreement. It's gotta be with the office has to has has to have a copy of the listing agreement and any modification to it. So if you're doing a price reduction, if you're canceling it, if it's withdrawing it, it's got it. We have we need a paper record of it from a risk management perspective. So make sure you guys are all doing that. Um, also, I got a call, you know, about wanting to know of an escrow company to use, and uh, we have an in-house escrow company that's really good. So Pele and Shirley, they're there. They're there to answer questions. If you need uh, a buyer's or seller's estimate to give to your clients, um, they'll provide one. Um, and, you know, just Cannon Hills closings, they're in our office. Uh, if you don't know about them, uh, just ask one of the staff, walk over to them. They're there all the time. Although I think Pele had a flat tire today. So I saw her in the parking garage changing a tire. <laughs> Oh no! Yes. Um, let's see. I don't see Josh there. So, oh, so here's a thing that came up, and it was a good topic. So, contingency removal forms. You know, when you're releasing contingencies, a lot of times you're doing it. Um, you're doing it based on a request for repairs or um, something that you want from the seller, make sure you're referencing the correct agreement on your contingency removal form. So a lot of times people just remove all their contingencies based on the purchase agreement. But if you've asked uh, the, buy, the seller for you know, a certain amount of credits or repairs and they've agreed to do it, and you, but only if you, you know, your buyers are willing to release the contingencies, you need to reference what their what that agreement is. Uh, the R R R R. Right. So there's the request for repairs, 
um, or there's the seller response to the request for repairs. What, whatever it may be, reference the correct agreement because if you just reference the purchase agreements and you release all your contingencies, you could be uh, SOL or your buyers could if the seller decides not to do something. So um, make sure that's, that's being done. Um, okay, so another thing things we're having to do with our uh, offers now in this competitive market, we're getting countered out, no appraisal contingency um, is very common. So the issues are if a property does not appraise, two, two or three things could happen. Buyer can put in more money um, so the lender only uh, lends on the appraised value. So if something comes in under value, they're gonna need to add more money to the deal. Um, that's one thing. They could ask the seller to reduce the purchase price to the appraised value. That's the second thing. Seller but the doesn't seller have... has no obligation to do that because you don't uh, have your appraisal contingency. No, no obligation. But even if you have no, you, you could still ask them. There's nothing, you know, you don't get a slap on the wrist for asking. They just right. may tell you to pound salt, you know, um, or middle me in the middle. So, you know, maybe the seller is not willing to reduce the purchase price all the way, but, you know, halfway or a portion. Um, but you really could, can't, you know, you have to use to, in order to cancel on a contingency, you got to use it in good faith and just canceling it on an appraisal, you know, when you've had no appraisal contingency may be an issue. So, those are a few other things. Um, I know we're starting a little late. So Josh, if you wanted to uh, take over. Yeah, thanks for starting us off. Sorry, I ran into a couple of uh, challenges, no but the obstacle is the opportunity. So here we are. Happy to have everyone here. Happy Tuesday, now into April. Um, crazy how quickly uh, this year is already going by, the first quarter over. Um, on the next team meeting, um, I'll share with everyone uh, the pretty amazing results uh, for March. Um, which are pretty extraordinary in terms of profit and productivity. And obviously, once again, a tribute to everyone here and, and others that are not on this call. But we continue to, uh, you know, create uh, unprecedented results. So I'm um, really proud of that. And thank you, all of you guys, for your commitment. So I always like to start off with a little bit of a, a piece on mindset. And I, I wrote a little bit of something on habits um, over the weekend. And then we did our power session uh, yesterday uh, around habits. So I had a couple of slides I prepared that I wanted to go through with you guys. So why don't we get that up on the screen, please? And I wanna thank uh, Alfredo and Carlos for putting this together at the last second on my, on my way back here about an hour ago. Thank you guys. So I always, you know, I, I really do believe uh, that habits, which is missing there, dictate your destiny, right? Your habits are really what define you. Uh, and fortunately, you choose your habits. So you can choose to fortify existing habits that are great, or you can choose to change habits that are not so favorable. So uh, let's go into the next slide. Right. And it starts with like, what are the right habits, right? So what are some of the things that are really working well for you in your life that are giving you great results? And what are some of the things that are maybe deterring you from achieving what you aspire to achieve? Right. So it really starts with that definition. Um, what gives you the greatest return on your effort? You know, Gary Keller wrote that book, The One Thing. What's the one thing you can do such that everything else becomes either easier or unnecessary, right? So what are those key sort of linchpin habits? You know, and it, in our business, it's always about prospecting and lead generating. So are you doing that with consistency? Are you doing that intelligently? What does that look like for you? And then beyond that, just in life, like exercise, eating right, you know, um, reading, spending time with your family, whatever that is that really gives you gratification and helps you, you know, achieve your purpose, identify, them, right? Define them. Um, what gives you momentum? And then really keep them narrow, right? I always, I'm a big believer, go small to get big. So create some really small, tight, narrow habits and, and let them guide the rest of your life. For me, like exercise is absolutely imperative. It's like gets my day started, it gives me energy, it gives me flow, it gives me a small victory at the beginning of the day that I can carry through to the rest of the day, right? So again, what are the habits that really give you um, a great return on your effort? All right, let's move to the next one. And then habits, like set yourself up to succeed, right? You know, a big part of creating the right habits is 
um, putting prompts and triggers in your way. Like for me, it's like, okay, you know, I set my workout stuff out at, at, you know, at the end of the night for the next day. So when I wake up, it's right in front of me. I, it, it's right on my mind. It's highly, as I say, visible, easy, convenient. You know, when it comes to food, I mean, and it works in the opposite way. If you're trying to like really become more healthy, take all the healthy stuff, unhealthy stuff, I should say, out of your refrigerator, out of your, your cupboards, whatever the case may be. Set yourself up to succeed when it comes to lead generating. Build a bunker, create an environment, whether it's at your home or whether it's in your office, where there's very limited distractions, right? It's these, these are very simple, easy things, but set yourself up to succeed by prompting you, by triggering you to do the right things, and then making sure those prompts and triggers don't exist, eliminate them in things that you want to take out of your life, right? That is what it's all about, like work smarter, not just harder. Any comments on this? I always want to make it interactive, but I also try to like balance with sort of moving fast because we got a lot to cover. Does anyone have any uh, any comments or questions? I think it's pretty basic, but it's again, how do we master these concepts, right? Okay, the next slide. Get started. I think we overthink so much. The first step is often the most difficult step and all it needs to do is be a baby step, right? We think that we've got to conquer the world overnight. Just get started. It's the easiest way to get into the right habits. Start, right? Small incremental improvements. At the end of the day, sorry, that's misspelled. That's probably on me. Create sustainability. Whatever your plan is, make sure it's sustainable, right? And, and again, that whole compounding effect, the right habits over time compounded lead to extraordinary results, right? And the habits are just really simple. It's the things that we do with consistency. It's all about consistency and consistency is about sustainability. Start small and just create incremental improvement. Keep it simple. Anybody, anything? Well, I can just mention one thing uh, sure. <laughs> that I, I think is really critical to do. I call myself a creature of habit because um, I, I do look at what I'm doing uh, for, for each day, the week and the month and um, get up at the same time, you have to get up at the same time, I'm completely getting out of your refrigerator is a really important thing when you're working, you know, especially when you're working from home. So whether it's your eating habits, the things that you, you, you start your day with, um, continue to do them and every day. So again, it, it's, it, it is a habit and, and you can get into that and be very, you know, um, I, I think it's very profitable. Yep. And, and, and having a great deal of self-awareness to recognize what are the things that are working in your favor and the right habits and what are the things that are not working in your favor and what are you doing to change those not such favorable habits. And it starts with self-awareness. Um, I have a little tidbit for at least yeah, my, please. what leads me to success. Um, you know, I think my hallmark is doing what I say I'm going to do, right. As being responsive. And you know how I do that? The thing that I'm like, ugh, I don't want to do that. That's the very first thing I do every single day. Anything I'm like, ugh, I don't want to do that because everything feels good after that. Yep. And identify those. I often talk about Brian Johnson, the guy I use for my power sessions. Identify your masterpiece day. Coming back to self-awareness, document what's really working well for you and, and continue to build upon that and fortify that. And then identify what isn't and, and make the necessary changes and start, just get started and do it small incremental steps. Yeah, Great do the stuff. thing you don't wanna do and everything else feels good from that point. Yep, it's momentum, love it. Thanks, Kristen. You're welcome. Thanks, Ellen. All right, next slide. And then celebrate guys, that's also how you create that sort of momentum. And I love this, celebrate intensely and celebrate immediately because at the end of the day, you're trying to connect the action with the reward. So, you know, there, there's science and biology behind this, the neuroscience. When, when you're doing the right things and you're celebrating them, you're fortifying um, th those patterns, right? And you're rewarding yourself and it starts to create a lot more momentum and, and, and flow. So, um, and I love this statement, do, doing what's best is what you enjoy most. Doing what's best, not the best, do, doing what's best, meaning doing the right things is what you enjoy the most. We all wanna win. Right, we all wanna win. We all wanna feel like we're progressing and growing, right? And the right habits are the catalyst behind that. 
So when you connect those habits with that momentum and that flow, um, it just continues to, again, build that, that, uh, that, that, that positivity. And it fortifies itself and it perpetuates itself. And it creates, its, it creates that like virtuous cycle. I think it's really important. It's amazing. You know, when you're in flow and you're really feeling great, it just continues to add and add and add, right? And compound. So doing what's best is what you enjoy most. All right, next one. And this is just to sum it up, you know, create, oh, I talked about it a moment ago, create a winnable game, right? And habits are what help us create that winnable game. We all want to feel like we're winning, like we're growing, like we're progressing, right? And I love this. When you make a mistake, whatever, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's win or learn. Sorry, that again was in, done in haste. Win or learn. There is no shame if you don't succeed. You just say to yourself, needs work. It's just another opportunity to improve, right? Win or learn, right? And at the end of the day, it's all about playing the long game and habits are the foundation of that. If you're going to achieve anything extraordinary, it's going to take time. And it's going to take the right habits over time. Sustainability, endurance, right? It's not going to happen overnight, guys. As much as we may want it, and that's okay to want it and have urgency, I fundamentally believe in that, but also recognizing that great achievement takes time and it's a function of, you know, executing the right habits. Any uh, last uh, thoughts or questions? All right. Thanks, guys, for, for listening and chiming in on that. So Michael did his part. Um, I, I think we have some of our title people here. Um, sorry, I'm jumping in here and I'm not seeing all the faces. Lauren, I see um, you may be the only one. I'm, I, that perhaps could be the case. Oh, oh Brandon, Brandon, right next to him. Sorry. <laughs> yes. And you know Ellen is here. Yeah, and Ellen. I'm sorry, Ellen just spoke. Um, so, uh, who wants to uh, who wants to start us off? Well, I'll be bold. I'll jump in. Okay. okay. Great. All right, guys. So, so um, we are slowing down a bit from the refi boom. Thank goodness, because uh, it's going to allow title escrow lending everybody to more uh, con fully concentrate on the resale side of things, which is still uh, hopping crazy. It's it's been really good. Let me throw some stats at you uh, to kind of put it in perspective where we are, kind of a five-year uh, snapshot and then, and then a two-week snapshot, okay? This is LA County coming at you. Uh, listing inventory in LA County is down the last couple of weeks. I don't think anybody's surprised about that. Uh, there's a, a severe lack of inventory, but we've been pushing for more inventory, more product to come on. And frankly, demand is just eating that up alive. So we're actually down 2% in inventory just in the last two weeks. If I was to take the last five years of LA County average and take 2020 out of it, all right, because it was just a just an abnormal year. So last five years minus 2020, we are 60%, 60% less inventory than that five-year average, LA County. All right. So real severe lack of inventory. Um, with there's there's a case to be built that waiting is costly. I can start giving you numbers, call me, email me, talk to me, but I, I'll give you some numbers that show you waiting will cost you more. The price of a house today, the price of a house tomorrow. Interest rates today, interest rates tomorrow. We can put it in black and white. You will be much better off buying today than you will waiting and buying tomorrow at a higher price with a higher interest rate. So that is an easy uh, show to any buyer who's, who's sitting on the fence and waiting. Kristen, you said it. You want a deal? Call me in two years. There ain't no yeah. deal. But yeah. there is, there is a, a serious argument to be made that waiting is going to cost you a lot of money. If you're playing in the higher end, if you're over $4 million bucks, the days on market is down to 201 days. What was it last year? 616. So over $4 million, 201 now, 616 last year. Uh, just, just shaved off just a humongous, what is that? It's like a year, it's crazy. Um, and, then, and then the last thing is uh, days on market last year, LA County uh, was 32 uh, days on market. Uh, today's 32, last year was 74. So you can see again, how we're just shaving days on market off like crazy. Things are flying, you know, it, all of this is couched in being priced, right? So things have to be priced, right? But if you, if you hit all those things, you will absolutely, if you're listing, have yourself a sale, it's, it's money in the bank. The last thing I wanna say guys, and I'm sorry, Ellen and Brandon, if I'm stealing your thunder, but April, <laughs> April, 
April 12th. I went out first. April 12th is the tax deadline, guys. So it's, it, it is a, a, a penalty after April 12th. So it's a good touch. Reach those people. Anybody and everybody who you want to reach out to, uh, hit me up for a, a duplicate copy uh, or as best I can get of their tax bill. It's just a good way for, uh, for you guys to, uh, to touch these people. It's coming up. Uh, everybody who owns a home needs to know this. And I'm going to drop in chat uh, something that came out from the LA County Assessor's Office reminding everybody of this uh, tax deadline, uh, which is a good share if you're looking for material. So I'll drop that link in the chat. That's it. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Can I ask a you question, Ellen. Lauren? <laughs> you said tax deadline was the 12th. I thought it was extended from the 15th to the 17th this year. That's you're, income thinking, tax. you're thinking income. Ah, thank you. That's for everybody, but the property tax is the second half tax bill that Lauren's talking about. Yeah. Go ahead, Ellen. I'll, I'll go after you. <laughs> well, you, you did a great job there, Lauren. I'll tell you that because I had a lot of the same things to talk about. Um, so we all know that uh, you know Proposition 19 went into effect on April, April the first. So that's your 55 and older. You know that's that's an important feature. Um, so so just you know keep keep that in mind. Um, and it, it, we're at roughly around 3% uh, on interest rates with the mortgage companies. And um, I mean, I, 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 I think we're in, we're in a great position and, and I agree with Lauren. I mean, that's exactly what we have. We have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of uh, buyers and, um, you know, and, and very few uh, properties on the market. So, you know, we'll see how that plan, you know, goes, you know, to the end of the year, but uh, right now it's, like you said, you know, it's a frenzy um, and it's, and it's difficult and it's very frustrating, but it is, it is what it is. And it's not a bad market. I think we're, we're in a very good position. Awesome. Thank you, Ellen. You're welcome. So uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just um, come up with a few different things. Uh, first, locally here, um, we do have some good news to share that in that March was our best March on record. Uh, for Fidelity title. And when I say that, that's a real-time barometer. So Fidelity being the largest insurer in LA County, when we're experiencing that kind of volume of closings, that means that's what the market is doing. And most people won't really know that probably for a few weeks because everyone is on delay, right? So you more or less can start sharing that kind of positive information. What people are hearing now is February, across the nation was the largest jump on record in the last 15 years. So that's what people are reading is how hot February is probably expecting the same for March, but we, you know, know actually know that in terms of closings and openings, um, we just are coming off our best month. So it's amazing what this market continues to produce. So tied to buyers, tied to sellers. I know it's frustrating right now, uh, trying to place a buyer in a property. Obviously there's a lot of, multiple offers across the board. Now is a great time to start getting those letters out to your farms, the areas that your buyers genuinely want to find a home in, get those handwritten notes going. If you want resources to that, and you don't have the time to do it on your couch or with your kids, let me know. I know some good resources that can do and put together some handwritten type of notes connected to your farm. And then conversely, and the seller side, if you are too busy, you got listings and you're just, you know, showing to 200 people and you just don't have time to do the marketing that you should be doing because you need to leverage your listings. That's the name of this business. Um, if you need an automated system that'll take your li uh, listing from MLS and then create 10 customizable automated marketing pieces, letters, door hangers, postcards, I can show you how to do that as well. Um, and there's just tons of great tools available to you guys for all of us. So now is the time, spring's here, it always, always takes off again. So um, let's try and leverage this opportunity while we have it, guys. Thanks. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, Brandon. So I want to um, recognize uh, a couple of, uh, well, I actually want to recognize um, our top producers for March. So Alfredo, do you have those graphics? And I'm going to actually be posting this on social media, but I wanted to before I did that, just recognize them internally. A couple of people are probably on this call and some may not be, but at least we can congratulate them collectively.
Alfredo, you have that for me or? All right, why, why we're waiting. Um, Michael, we prepared to talk about the, uh, the Zillow piece. Um, I'm reviewing it. Um, what was sent to me was a little convoluted, okay. so we got to figure it out. We'll hold off. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll, it's, it's regarding guys, just uh, some things that we want to do internally as an office that I think can, you know, help us gain more, um, quite frankly, more, be more effective at marketing our own listings um, relative to do some of the things that Zillow was doing. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm reaching out because I have relationships with other brokers or managers. Um, so I want to see what they're doing, like Douglas Elliman, you know, what are they doing as a company? Uh, Compass, um, they're a huge brokerage throughout California. What are they doing? And it, in a nutshell, so the office knows, it's basically uh, Zillow is putting, taking our listings from the MLS, but only putting our name and uh, broker a responsible broker on without any contact info. So, you know, it was quote, okay, when they were just, um, you know, uh, when they were not a brokerage, but now they're a brokerage, so. So in, in essence, we're, you know, feeding our own competition. And so we think that there are some ways that we can sort of push back, you know, and, um, and, and quite frankly, Robert Howell, who is on the call, I wasn't sure if he was, has been spearheading this. And I want to give him credit for that because I, I think it's a great idea. And we want to try to do that, you know, collectively. I think there's going to be more power in that. Um, it's fine. We're, we're totally good with reaching out to other brokers, brokerages, but I, I, I don't care what they do. I want to do the right thing for us. And, um, and we feel that this is this. So we, this is that. And we created an email. Um, Robert, are you on? I guess we'll, we'll do it next time if we're not prepared. But that you know, assuming you believe in it, we can actually just send you guys the email and you can put in your own name and we're gonna, we'd be sending this collectively to the MLS um, and starting and being the leaders in this to, cause I think a lot of other brokerages will, you know, come on board, but we don't need to wait for them. We, we can be the leader. Yeah, I don't know if my reception is very good or not, but in a, in a nutshell, basically we have a new discount realtor named Zillow. And what they said at the National Keller Williams Convention, what we need to do, each local MLS group of realtors, call your MLS, send them an email, basically ask them to require that every agent's picture be on the We lost you, Robert. MLS. And, and the contact of the agent. By, doing, by asking that you send every agent's contact information, we understand that that's how Zillow is now working. It just cuts and paste. So if we just send an email to the MLS asking for this, they will actually require it, which helps us as we move forward, keep a discount realtor uh, weekend because it will have our pictures and our contact information as well as their premier agent as they will always do. But this is a strategy. I think you guys got the, the gist of it. We want to basically ask, you know, the MLS that we submit everything from with our the picture. Keller Williams last uh, family reunion convention. All right, we got it, Robert. <laughs> so um, that's what we, we feel like if we come at them with, with a show of force and some numbers. I mean, the MLS is basically us anyway, right? So... Um, we want to be the sort of the leader in this. It, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this within Keller Williams nationally. I'm sure there's been a lot of talk locally, but I don't think that I'm aware of there's been a lot of action around it. So we want to be that catalyst and hopefully it starts something much bigger so we can exactly represent ourselves more effectively relative to Zillow being our competition. So let us, um, we've been working a little bit with the ALC around this. Let us get a little bit more organized over the next week um, and then, you know, share this with you and, and give you a, a ready to go email that you can put your name into, assuming you want to participate. And um, we'd like to do this um, in, in unison. Michael, anything else? And then. No, I mean, I said what I okay. need to earlier. So um, yep. I'll, I'll probably repeat it uh, next week in the broker. Yep. So. Cool. Thank you both. Um, so coming back to recognition now, let's do it. Top producers for March. And we'll, uh, we'll start with the individual.
and the graphics are a little better when it's not being screen shared, but you guys can see. So Lenny Lerman at number one, Hamid Zaroudi, number two, Solomon Gans, number three, Victoria Ben Moshe, number four, Ryan, uh, Rick Ryan, number five, Jake Pleva, number six, Zach Blum, number seven, Kristen Toll, number eight, Kara Carnes, number nine, Victoria Munoz, number 10. And, and you know, guys, I'll, I'll tell you what strikes me is um, how many people are closing deals in our office. And it's really inspiring. You know, obviously you do see a lot of the same people a lot, but you also see a lot of new people emerging. And again, this is one month, but it, it, these are all people that, that are producing well beyond one month. And it, it really, for me, as you know, one of the owners of the office, the one leading the office, I, I'm just like blown away by seeing such, you know, so many, so many people closing deals and a lot of new, young, emerging talent as well. Um, it's, it's exciting. It really is. And, uh, you know, it, we're just growing and evolving and it's, it's spreading like wildfire. And it's, I think, really a big function of, of course, the value, the staff, I have a great, great staff, but it's just our culture of collaboration. We share, we learn from one another, one another, we continue to raise the bar. And I think that is truly like our secret sauce is our culture of collaboration, of transparency, of vulnerability, of humility, of diversity. Um, that's what propels our growth. And, and then action guys, because none of this happens without each one of you guys getting into action and stepping out of your comfort zone. So I just want to commend all of you. I see Kristen and I, I, I know there are a couple other people that are um, on this call, but great, great accomplishments across the board. And then let's go to the top teams. And you see in number one, uh, ME Properties, Missy and Alex, amazing. Uh, number two, MS Property Partners, Daphna, Greg, Howie, Michelle. Uh, I, I won't. I, I I'll, won't get everyone's name, so I won't put myself in a um, in a box there. Robert Howe, great job, Robert. Tim Gavin and his team, and then Ben and Zach and their team. Great, great accomplishments across the board, and you know, definitely a lot of familiar faces there. But uh, we're we're doing great, great work, guys. Congratulations. All right, so I wanna do this uh, relatively quickly because I wanna get our special guest on and hopefully the next five minutes. Um, just a little bit of wants and needs off market. Um, just give everyone a, a platform to share anything that they'd like to share with the group. Concise and don't be bashful. Um, this is Negar. I just wanted to say I have a client need in Beverly Hills post office. Her budget is up to 2.3. If anybody has anything, I'll go ahead and put my email and telephone number information in the chat. Thank you. I do, I do. It's 2.3 is the uh, cap of what she can afford. So please let me know. I would love that. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Nagar. Thanks, Kath. Who else? So I have two pocket listings. Uh, both are on Benedict Canyon. One is uh, asking is uh, 2 million. It's four bedroom, four bath, about 2,400 square feet with a pool. I have another one, um, which is almost 3,500 square foot with a pool, asking is 4 million, gorgeously updated, really, really nice. Um, I also have a one bedroom, one bath condo, um, South Bedford, I believe it's in area eight or nine uh, off of Robertson. Uh, very, very cute property asking is 650. Um, yeah, I guess I'll put, put information on the chat box as well. You're awesome, Kathy. Those signs are everywhere. Love it. Who else wants to uh, share wants and needs? Hello. Matt. Yeah, if anyone has a two bedroom condo, one bath, kind of newer in the Echo Park area in the 750, 700 to 750 range, let me know. Appreciate it. You got it, man. Anyone else? I mean, it's south. 
Come on, no one else? Uh, Sepide is here. Uh, hey, Sepide. Hi. Uh, I have three clients uh, who are looking for Beverly Hills, one up to 2.4, the other one 4.3, and uh, the other one four and a half up to seven, which is can be fixer uh, to moving condition in Beverly Hills. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Last also, call. Can I share? We and all have buyer needs, but it's not going to help. Uh, <laughs> oh, we all have buyer needs. Kristen was yeah, coming. We all have lots of buyer needs. Lack of inventory. So yeah, but I, if anybody has anything on the in the flats, 10 to uh, 15 million, um, it's not for me. It's a, a colleague in another um, office that has begged me for it. So if you have anything in the flats, 10 to 15 million, I'll just relay the message. Cool. I have uh, is new on the market now. It's in the flats of Studio City, close to Universal Studios. It's a compound. It's two houses on a double lot, 12,000 square feet. It's gated. It's just under 2 million. The main house is three bedrooms with a separate breezeway additional bedroom. And then the ADU, which is a two-story house behind it, uh, is a one bedroom, very cool. So if someone has a home office, has a friend they wanna work from home or just a rental, it, this is an incredible rare property on the end of a cul-de-sac about uh, three blocks or so from Universal Studios in Studio City, just under 2 million. Then I have a, it's nearly a 800,000 to a million dollar remodel depending on whose numbers you take. But it's also in the flats in Studio City on Agnes. The landscaping's going in now. The roof is, the, the re-roofing is happening. The whole inside has been designer done. It's gorgeous for two and 2.4 million. It's not on the internet yet. And I have a major renovation on Mulholland uh, that would be technically, I guess, Hollywood, uh, close to Laurel Canyon, stunning views, that's about 4,000 square feet. That's closer to 5 million, but not on the internet yet. So there's, there's some things for all these guys with buyers you can talk about, not on the internet yet, the last two. Awesome, Robert. Thanks, man. Last call. All right. I want to recognize uh, a gentleman that is uh, just relentless in his action. Um, great attitude but you know always just going after it and very lofty standards and expectations and he's well on his way to or achieving at extraordinary levels just graduated from the mentor program and he's onward and upward um isai manios congratulations hey. brother thank you thank you yes. thank you yeah. <laughs> and uh lot. any words of uh of wisdom for uh for this group uh yeah i'd like to share my experience i mean if I, this is my eight months into becoming a realtor so i started century two in 21 i found kayla williams i met josh and everything turned from there like everything started working out met people connected uh had a mentor uh learned from the best um as i i know coming into this industry like not knowing anything um it's gonna be stressful whether it's marketing or figuring something out but this mentorship program they had um I had, I had i had a great mentor i'm sure there's other great mentors as well but i i had an awesome mentor maxwell anytime i'll call her up with like a a, a problem she'll come come up with a solution something i wouldn't even think about and from there we'll start closing escrows and 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 it was all, it was just all about connecting having a positive mindset and and creating those habits and and just being consistent and and Keller Williams was was a place to be and 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 everything started turning around and just the great people around uh, um, everyone's just looking to become better so that that has a huge effect in, in people um, so the main tip would just be be consistent and if something's working out keep doing it and 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 the results will kick in and I wanted it so badly that. I would I'll make a bunch of cold calls um, and and I just a bunch of cold calling and I wanted it so badly so so that's probably why I got a deal in like 
uh, 30 days. Awesome, man. Great, great words of, of wisdom. And it's definitely um, a team effort, right? As you've identified, you know, with Max, um, Kristen. Go I want to say, I want to yeah. say something on, on Isaiah's behalf, man, that kid is so smart. He works mm -hmm. so hard and he has no fear. One conversation we were on three way with somebody speaking Spanish. I don't understand a word of Spanish. I was speaking English. He's speaking to me in English, translating it to the to the seller who was refusing to do the last thing. It was really composure. He was so smart. And mind you, he has listings from Bakersfield to Beverly Hills. He was able to get a $4 million listing. He had five listings in during this time, which we all know it's all about listings and not buyers are like, you know, but listings are your bread. So congratulations. It was my honor being your mentor. Thank you. Love it. Great. Across the board. Kristen, go ahead. My yeah. turn? Yeah. Okay, killer. You closed more deals than any mentee ever to graduate. Mm -hmm. I think you closed, you know, I think you you beat me by three in your first eight <laughs> months. Um, I can't believe how hard you worked. You know, um, every time you were in class, you had the best questions. Um, you... You know, you knew how to work the system that we put in place for you. You were always pleasant, positive, but man, did you work hard. And that's what I said to you when I, you know, when I saw your last deal come across my desk that, you know, meant you graduated. It was just like, wow, you really worked hard. You're really impressive. Um, I, I know good things are going to happen for you. Um, and you, gosh, you never shied away from asking for what you needed. And that's what you need to make it in this business. And I was just really happy to be any part of that. And um, I'll be cheering you on from the sideline forever moving forward. Congratulations. You're Thank awesome, you. brother. Yeah. I appreciate it. Asking for help is a sign of strength. 100%. And you're raising the bar, man. You're just, just getting started. I mean, it's going to be real exciting and inspiring to watch you grow into an absolute top producer. I have no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't wait once like we can actually go out and like network because like, Oh man, to go in open houses and meet people and all that stuff. I just can't wait for that either. Great work. And Thank Maxwell you. and Kristen, you're awesome as well. It's definitely a team effort. Appreciate all of you guys. Okay, can I say one more thing? Completely. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, as many of you know, uh, when I was on vacation, my dog was lost and got, uh, you know, this is while I was out of the country. I just want to say that uh, you know, my call for help was answered, but it was answered by the people in this office in a hard way. And it made me feel so much love. It made, I already knew I was in the best office, but it meant so much to me. She is home and it's because of you guys. Thank you so much. You're awesome, Kristen. Thank you. And that is really an amazing tribute to our culture and our, at the end of the day, it's our people. So I, I, I want to thank you all as well. It's, it's inspiring. All right, we're moving on to uh, this gentleman. Some of you know, um, I know the ALC knows him well, um, and some others know him well as well. I've got to know him, fortunately, over the last just over a year. Um, top producer for several years with Keller Williams in Baltimore, uh, running a very successful team. But his real passion lies in giving back and coaching. And also in being in this neck of the woods as he's gravitating out to California just to live a, a, a different life. And I'll let him speak for himself. Very um, always family with his priority. His family is his priority. And I have the good fortune of getting to know them as two beautiful children. And this guy's got a heart of gold and he's extremely purposeful and he's all about living you know, his best life and, sh and, and leading the way to show others how they can lead their best lives and being very purposeful in that process. So Ian, uh, welcome, man. Really happy to have you here. Um, maybe a little bit of background on yourself. And then I know your focus is going to be on database and how to use your database more effectively to drive your, your business and your life. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. Appreciate it. I know my first town hall was last June. And now I know a lot of the people, a lot of phases on here. So it's, it's a lot, it's a lot better to be a part of this now and be in it. Um, yeah. Thanks man. We're, we're, we're pretty much set. We're going home next week to sell our house and, and we're back here. And so my background, I got into real estate in 2004 as an investor. And then by 2012, 
I left my dad's business and uh, started a team. But I always, I was miserable running the team and like being the, the team lead, like the active leader agent. And I just started to develop systems and procedures to build businesses. And then I built a coaching business in 2014 to help. Like once we hit seven figures in our business and we're able to maintain and grow that, I realized that I just didn't like building it for myself. I wanted to build it for other people. And so our coaching business started. But one thing I really focused on and realized was that everybody had these goals but they weren't hitting them because they weren't growing as the people that were the catalyst to get the goal accomplished. And that is a big piece of our focus and trajectory is, you know, like Josh mentioned earlier, you, you have to change the habits. You must change the habits. There are serving habits and non-serving habits and the serving habits you keep and the non-serving you get rid of along with toxic people and thought process and mindsets and things like that. You just, it's just never going to work. So we applied that stuff and, and you know, today what we're going to talk about, I don't know how much time yet, but today what we're going to talk about is what I see from coaching and consulting with thousands of agents around the world is the number like one, two, and three things that can shift your business literally in an instant. In the next 30 days, you could have, you could have tremendous different results. Regardless of buyer market, buyer's market or seller's market, regardless of what's going on, because as you know, this market will not last forever. It will change. And this is the number one time, the best time for you to build the most solid and stable foundational elements and systems and procedures for your business. And that will lead to growth over time. What Josh said was sustainability and consistency in your action. It will lead to consistent and sustainable results, which I know a lot of us as real estate agents, we go through these cycles and those cycles are because the systems aren't working. And I can tell you right now that I used to not believe this, but um, nobody's loyal to you. Believe it or not, no one is loyal to you. They're loyal to the systems and procedures that you run. And I know that because I just sold my database back in Baltimore after running it for eight and a half years. We hustled BizBoats and expired to door knock for three months. And for eight and a half years or eight, eight years, three months, that thing delivered $35 million a year in referral business over and over and over and over again. And so when we positioned it to come out here, because this was our dream, my wife's from PV, we wanted a business that we could sell. Because I don't want to be a real estate agent forever in Baltimore. I wanted to do real estate here. So um, there were like five people lined up that wanted to buy our, our book of business. But really what they were buying was the systems and procedures that I ran the referrals that we got and keeping track of our numbers and the amount of people in the database. And then we went through how I run the systems, client care and listings and things like that. And that's what they bought. And I get a 10 year payout, literally mailbox money for the next 10 years because of what we actually were able to build. And then again, we duplicated that to help people all around the world. doesn't matter where you are. We have clients in China, England, Brazil, all over the U S Canada. It's all the same. It literally is all the same. And like the stuff we'll talk about today, that's how we, that's how we can foundationalize and strengthen the business. So when the market does turn, it doesn't matter. You just, you're, you'll keep consistent throughout any, any market, no matter what. Josh, what do you want to go over specifics? I know we got like really limited time. Mute. Mute, mute button. That, that, that would help. Um, I'm sitting there. Um, so we have 20 minutes. Um, okay. We talk about a database all the time, right? And, yeah. and I think some people get really overwhelmed by that, just that word alone, right? Sure. What does that mean? How do I use it? You know, you know, I'm not, you know, funny enough, I was at a meeting this morning with a gentleman who owns a 90 agent brokerage that does probably about 500 million a year. Yeah. And he happens to be like one of their top five agents. And he's like, I've never used a database. Yeah. Okay. You know, he's in a high end market in Newport. So I'll just, you know, um, but I want, if you can take 20 minutes yeah, totally. and talk about like, what does database mean? Literally. I mean, it, may, it seems some of us, it's very obvious and others not so much and that's okay. And then what is your best advice to go about, leveraging your database to drive your business like just sure. a, a 
really some simple, clear principles that people can walk away from and actually implement and execute on. Yeah, you know, what's interesting out here that I've found that's not interesting or that's not awesome where I'm where I was selling is that at a $200,000 price point, you have to run your database. You have to be Thank streamlined. You. you have to do your thing. Or you are a busy real estate agent. And I know for, for any of you that were busy real estate agents, like I was in the beginning, like you want to jump. Like it's so it's so stressful. You're always at, you know, the, the call of the client and weekends and nights and it just didn't work. And the, the more I focused on, like when I had my, our, my wife had our daughter in 2015, I did not want to work weekends. And I would not work nights anymore. And people would say to me, that's a death sentence. But the tighter I ran that database, the closer I got the ideal client dialed in, the better my marketing got because it was very specific and targeted. Those people showed up and I served them on my terms. And that was like the most green thing. And I never believed any of my coaches ever that that's how it would be. But I tried it because I hated my life. I hated my world seven days a week, five open houses a weekend. I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. So, you know, in this market with the average price point, let's just say it's a million, it's, you're so geared, so, it's so much better to be able to run this really cool business and make a lot of money in 10 transactions or, or 20 transactions versus, you know, me having to do 150, 250 transactions, which is exhausting. My wife literally gets nauseous every time we talk about that. So first and foremost, like I said earlier, the number one thing that I tell people is you have got to evolve into the person that can run the type of business that you want that will yield the results that you want to get. You have to become that person. And like Josh said earlier, it, it comes with the habits that you have starting in the morning. And I know this sounds simple, but it really is, a, it really is the foundation of your day. And the way that you, you know, respond to emails, the way you respond to texts and calls during the day, if you're at the mercy of the client or of the phone, then it's going to drive the results. It's just going to drive. You don't have to not be available, but you just have to tighten up a little bit in terms of how often that phone gets to dictate your time and how you're in it. And so just think about that. Who am I now, right? And who do I need to become to run this business that I see as possible to get the results I see as possible? Shift comes slow. You have to be patient, but you have to trust that it's the right way to go. So who am I now and who do I need to be? The other thing is, where am I now and where do I want to be? And both of those gaps, the bridge is the work. And just stay within that work and you'll get it much faster than like just kind of taking this course and going over here and grabbing that. And let's try this marketing and let's go sign up for Zillow or whatever it might be. Like once you understand who you need to be and what your results are going to be, then you can tailor the marketing accordingly. And the way that we do that is through the KW135. It is a, it's a brilliant tool. I use it. I coach very large businesses now, not just in real estate, but we, my wife and I are, are CEOs for hiring very large companies around the world. And when we go in to organize, you know, a, a $2 billion company or a $500 million company, the first thing we do is we bring out the 135 and we lay that little thing out with the CEO and we lay it out with the CFO and with the employees just to understand where we're going because it's a map. Right? That's why it's called a GPS. So if you haven't used that 135, this is not a, this is not a plug for KW's stuff. I've been a KW guy for the last eight years. I started a Cobalt Banker. They wouldn't let me build a team. They wouldn't let me have an assistant. I just, I didn't like it. So I changed my environment, went to KW and they helped me build a business and subsequently made me much happier because I wasn't busy running around. But the 135 is the tool that you need to use. If you haven't used it, hit up Josh, hit up uh, Alfredo, hit up anybody. You can't hit me up. I'll, I will, I'm an expert at 135s. I've done probably 5,000 of them. If you want me to build a custom 135 for you just to show you how this thing could work, it's very easy. Goal goes at the top. Across the middle are your three priorities. And then down each one are your five strategies. And that's it. And that's the way that you can go from, you know, movement versus achievement, like in the bold law, movement doesn't make the money. Focus and achievement does. Because all I really care about in business, especially as a real estate agent, is my dollar productive activities and how much I'm making per hour. And if I, if I give myself a maximum of two to three hours on every listing from, from a listing appointment to the to, uh, close of escrow, 
if I spend 10 hours on it, 20 hours on it, I'm not happy because I'm not honoring my integrity and my commitment to only spending three hours on it. It's a business transaction. And that means my hourly rate, rate went from, you know, an average of, let's say five to $7,500 an hour to now I'm at 500 bucks an hour, a thousand bucks an hour. And although that sounds really amazing, it's not that amazing when you have your expenses and the big sacrifice, which is the other part of your life, your family, your personal life, whatever it might be. I just didn't want to sacrifice that anymore. I just wasn't willing to live with the regret that I would feel from doing real estate transactions and not being at a playground or hanging out with my kid or, or being at home for dinner and bed and bath time. It's just, I wasn't willing to sacrifice anymore. So the systems had to get tighter. So step number one, put that one, three, five out. And when you're doing your one, it's a math problem, right? Everything in, everything in business is a math problem. I don't care if you hate math like I do or you love math, it's just a math problem. So if you read the red book, literally the amount of money you want to make is based on the amount of transactions you're going to do. And that's based on the amount of people you're going to touch and have in your database. And so if you have hundred people in your database and the, just say the number's 20 to one, which it's not, it's 12 to two in the red book. But let's say, say it's 20 to one. If you have hundred people in there, there's five transactions right now that you have in your database. If you worked it correctly, if you worked it purposely, there's five transactions sitting. Now, let's put aside the buyer's market or seller's market and there's crazy low inventory. There are five transactions sitting in that database right now. So before you buy ads, before you buy Zillow or Realtor.com or any of those things, you got to hit that database unless you're like totally antisocial, which you might be in the wrong business for, but I know some really successful antisocial agents that, that kill it. So right first thing you do is you go through your phone and you go through all your contacts and you get them into a spreadsheet. If you don't have that, like do it, spend the time. By the way, we have a company called Bullseye, sorry to interrupt you, yep. that we pay for that will take your phone, your database and literally put it into command. Oh, sweet, perfect. Yeah, free. Perfect. Yep. And then once they are downloaded or uploaded and they're in one spot, like I just like things very simple. Once they're in one spot, then you can go through them and you can categorize the people that really you know that if you call them and you say, hey, it's Josh, they're going to be like, oh, Josh, KW Beverly Hills, real estate agent. Oh, got it. All the way down to the people that if you called them, you know, because you, you might have met them at an open house a year ago, if you just said, hey, it's, it's Ian, I'm just calling to follow up. How are you doing? How's your house search going? Anything I can do for you? They kind of get triggered and remember. So they're not as warm. We want to hit those warm leads first. And then in that database, like once you upload that, now you'll know your weekly tasks right so you're gonna you know like this is my daily this is my weekly i know my numbers i know exactly what i have to do this week i know how many calls how many emails how many texts whatever your preferred communication is that's your job that's the only thing you do no studying con like, listen this is me speaking so josh might not like this but you're not studying contracts you're not marketing you're not building a website you're not getting business cards none of that stuff i haven't carried business cards in seven of the eight years I haven't had, I, my wife killed our website two years ago and we sold over $25 million in, uh, in 2020 during the pandemic when I was really here and I was building my podcast and our coaching business, scaling that up. We sold more business in 2020 than we did in 2019 because everything was just on autopilot. And so once you understand those numbers and you can make, you, you, oh man, here you can make like maybe two to five calls a day to the Mets database and you can crush it. I mean, crush it. We've been coaching people in LA County, and Orange County, up into Santa Barbara for probably like four years at this point. And it is astounding how low the numbers actually are to the actual traction that you get and closings that you get. Let's just call it in a standard market. Maybe it's a little harder than this market because you know, it's low inventory. But once you know those numbers, then what you do is you take the numbers, you understand your ideal client avatar, and then you're going to build your marketing around it, right? So whether it's social media marketing or your newsletter or e-blast or text, you know, mass text campaigns, everything targets to that ideal client who you want to work with because we can't serve everyone. We just can't. Most people are kind of like us in our database, and that's who we want to associate with. You know those outliers and the trouble that we mostly have with them. So don't stress that, that person is going to buy a $5 million house. If they're going to drag you around, waste your time, not give you accurate information, 
you know, tell you they're qualified and they're not, not show your bank letters. We don't want those people, especially in this market. We don't have time for that, one. And two, it's just a waste of your time for right now. I mean, if you had a big team and you could pawn them on to some buyer's agents, it still wouldn't be fair to the buyer's agents because you care about their time. So we really want to niche down and focus on that ideal client avatar, build our marketing profile around that, be very purposeful in our marketing, and understand what we put out, we are intending for that person or that type of person to see, and they will pick up on it and give them a call to action every single time. Anything you post, here's what you do next. Get my website, call me, text me. You know, look, I'm going to be at this, uh, I'm going to be at this grocery store giving out Girl Scout cookies. I'm going to be over here helping, you know, uh, uh, serve lunches for the homeless, whatever it might be, do your thing. Or I'm going to be at this open house, give a call to action every single time. And then from the database, and once you have the app, the, the database dialed, the ideal client, the marketing, you understand your touches throughout the week or throughout the month, like from there, and you start to have traction there. The good problem to have is, is four buyers under contract, which would be really good problem to have right now. Let's say you have two listings ready to roll. The next thing you build is your pre and active listing systems, right? Again, people are loyal to the system and procedure and how you run it, not you as a busy real estate agent, just getting crazy around town. So once you stage this thing out and get really purposeful and really masterful at building the database and the touch campaigns and actually connecting with people, having regular calls, and you're scaling those habits up, Again, forgetting about and eliminating the habits that didn't serve you, picking up habits that do serve you, you start to see traction. Then we're starting to build the systems to actually run the company, which is your buyer system and your listing system. Josh, can I share my screen? Yeah. I want to show I'm you. Can you give him a. I'll keep talking and I'll share my screen. I just want to show you guys an infographic that I built. It's rough, but it will show you. So once you build the buyer and listing systems, then all you have to do is you're working through a transaction and you're writing literally everything you do. You're building the procedures. The only way we were able to sell our company and, and get 10 years of, of active transaction payout for the next 10 years, anything they sell that comes from our database, whether it's one deep or 17 deep, will pay us out 25% for the next 10 years. It's, it's beautiful. You can so, share. Here, let me see if I can do this. Okay, see this right here? And anybody who needs this, I can send it to you. This is how you build the business. For any of you that are just feeling tired of running around or just being a busy real estate agent, this is how you, this is how you scale. This is how you start to bring people in to help you, which is the next step, which is leverage, either agents or admin or both. But this is how you do it. You start with your lead gen strategies, you get your lead, you get your prospect, you get your appointment, you got your client. Right, these live here. You live here when you're new, you just live here. And then everything between here has a system. How do you take a lead from a lead to a prospect? How do you take it from a prospect to an appointment set? How do you get your appointments to a client and become more efficient at it, right? It's all about systems. And then once they become a buyer, obviously going through financing, showing, writing offers. But in these in-betweens, you're gonna be writing Everything that you do, every step you take, you're going to be putting this in because everything has to be trackable. And the only way that you can build a business out, in my opinion, as I've built hundreds of businesses for people, is you have to track your, your progress. You have to track your systems while you're tracking your numbers. Same thing with seller side. Your pre-listing prep system, which is your like what you're going to show people in your listing appointment. Listing goes on the market, your offer, how you negotiate it, how you take it through home inspection, that kind of thing. That's, this is the way that, that, that you can build something so that the next time this thing cycles, the market cycles, or the next time you want to go on vacation, you're not the person at the pool with the computer out. I used to be that guy, and I just I, I, I was stuck between these two worlds where I knew there was something better, but I didn't understand how to get out of it. And so, I mean, today, it doesn't work like that. I have a team that's running the stuff at home. They kind of review contracts and stuff with me, but... They have an allotted amount of time that they can do that. Other than that, I, I'm not taking calls. I'm focused on California business, clients that I have here, the coaching clients that we have around the world, the podcast, the family, that's it. So I know it sounds kind of disconnected, but I also wanted my, my hourly rate to go up as much as possible. I wanted to help other people get into the business and teach and coach them in my team and outside of my team. And then also 
I wanted to make sure that I had a counterbalanced life, right? I didn't want to be all business and then make time for family. I wanted to be all family and I'll make time for business. And that was a hard transition. Once it happened, I just could never go back. Just absolutely never go back. So this, um, I'm going to close this. One second, I'm going to close this off. I'm going to bring up the video. Stop sharing. Does anybody else have 80 tabs open on their, their computers? <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, okay, so that's literally it. Like, that's as fast as I can pitch it. I can do this for five, 10 hours. I can do this over a year. I can do this in 20 minutes. That's it. I'm trying to get this 20 minute mark clean. I, I, I want to just take another five minutes. Thanks, man. I think yeah. that was a really yeah. good overview. Um, again, guys, about being really intentional, right? Movement versus achievement. I love, I love what Ian said. And that, that's yeah. the key to, like, we only have 24 hours in the day. It's how do we use that time most effectively? And Keller Williams, the company, and again, the right people within Keller Williams, because that's a big world, is about learning how to work smarter, really learning yeah. how to live a bigger life. That's what drew me to this company and why I remain and why I've got amazing relationships. And I like to think I'm very purposeful with my own time, but there's always dramatic opportunity to improve. Sure. So who wants to uh, spend the next few minutes giving, uh, asking Ian some questions? He's uh, obviously a really pretty, a very sharp guy. And by the way, real quick, while somebody's thinking about their first question, systems eliminate emotion. So when your client calls you and they're pissed off, like you work them back through your system, you figure out where your system breaks, it eliminates your emotional reaction. And then you get to make smarter or more serving and more purposeful decisions for your client's best interest, because it's not about us, it's about the client, always about the client. We'll get paid when we do our job serving the client. So the systems help you to not have the emotional reaction, which we all do. And that person calls and says, you know, the seller says, I'm not doing anything on that home inspection. Like, here's the system that we're gonna work through, you know? And it's about a standard, Ian said that as well. They're, they're yeah. buying a standard that you represent and the system yeah. helps you represent that with a lot more efficiency and effectiveness. Totally. Who has questions? Come on. Yeah, who's got the first question? It's I. What marketing channel is your focus on? Facebook. Say it again. Is, what marketing, marketing channel, channel are you focused on? Is it only referral base or what, what's your yeah, marketing? Only, only referral base. Yeah, because here's the thing. I didn't, I didn't need to be the biggest and the best. I, didn't, I cared about that until about 2016 when my daughter turned one and my wife wanted to divorce me. No joke. She's sitting right here. Like, I, I, I didn't need to be the $100 million company. I wanted to know that it was possible for me to build that, but I knew that at 25 or 35 million, I would have the cash to invest. I'd have the time to spend with my kids, and I would be able to start other businesses, which is what I like to do. Yeah. But Facebook, Facebook what was happens, my. Platform. What happens when you don't have that luxury? What do you mean? Of, ref of repeat referral business. Go build it. It's you. If you don't, like, and this is going to sound harsh, and I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible. So just yeah. know I can slow this down and I can teach some. I, Josh, why don't you set me up while I'm still here? Like, I can yeah. teach some stuff. I'll just break one of these down. We'll do like an hour in the training room. Like, I'll just be real slow and go into this deep. Um, if, you're, if you don't have repeat and referral, like, please don't take this offensive. Don't take offense to this. It's you. You're not a person that somebody wants to do business with again. You're not a person that someone feels comfortable or confident with referring to their family and friends. It's not a problem. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't make it wrong. It just means that your systems and procedures and your way of acting and being, it's just not there yet. So that's why I said in the beginning, you got to make sure that you're the person that can build the type of business you want. If you're, if you're in the cold lead game and you're cranking phone calls out and you're just not happy with that, there's nothing wrong with that. I know plenty of people that love it, but if you're not happy with it, then we have to make a change. The change starts from you. You have to become the person that can really instill that confidence and, and the, and the uh, connection in people so that they feel really comfortable to refer you to others. And that's just as simple as you can make it. What I was driving at is what if you're new to the area, your sphere is, is really young, such that they're not typically in a position to be buying homes, particularly in sure. a large market. Like, you know, and then that's a broad question. So I don't want to set you up to- No, you only have no, no, it, it yeah. gives my expertise. It's totally cool. I, it's, so I'm new to the area and I've got 185 people in my database that aren't 
that aren't real estate agents. I mean, I don't live here. I, I literally have lived here for the last two and a half months and I come vacation here a couple times a year, except for last year. But here's what I do. I do what's called the top-down method. I, I'm going to write a book. My wife keeps telling me, my dad keeps telling me, I got to write a book on this. The top-down method is um, I don't want to go one for one. I never have done that in my life in sales. I've never had a job. I've always been in sales. I, I don't want to go to you to get one sale. I don't want to go to you to get one sale. I don't want to go to five of you or 10 of you to get one sale. I, I feel that's very inefficient. So I'm going to go to the restaurant owner, the business owner, the ice cream shop owner, the, the gym owner. I'm going top down and I'm going to see, I'm going to take them a one thing book. No jokes. is how I book my business. I'm going to take them a one thing book. I'm going to use, okay, if you don't have any money, which I didn't, I was flat broke. My wife and I were three years behind on our mortgage. Cars got repoed, like dead broke eight years ago. And um, I would take the, I would hustle in the office. I'd be in every meeting. I'd do everything I could. And the title reps and the mortgage reps wanted to take me out to lunch just to hang with me and just kind of pick my brain and, and see if they could earn my business. I used that to go to the different restaurants that I wanted to get to know the owners. Once we did that enough and I got rapport built with the owners, I would take them a one thing book. I would take them a, and I did it on credit, by the way, because I had no money. Like my mom was paying for my gas. And so I'd take them a one thing book on credit with the market center and I'd give them the one thing book and I would literally only compliment them. Hey, I love that your servers do this and this. I love that your food comes out fast. Your food's always consistent. I just gave gratitude after gratitude. And then eventually, I never told them what I did. They always would ask, always would ask. And I think over the years, we probably did, my wife can take, she knows the numbers better than I do. We probably did 25 or $30 million worth of business from that strategy alone where the owner would say, I got 50 real estate agents coming in here a day. None of them have given me the time, the accolade, the gratitude, or just the care and concern about me and my business like Ian had. Hey, Ian, I got this. Hey, Ian, come over here. Check, talk to this guy who wants to sell his house. Hey, Ian, come over here talk to this guy. And that's how we built our business. So there's always a way to do it. I was scared. I didn't have any money to spend. And I was not door knocking for very much longer because I would literally cry in my car. And like I threw up on occasion. I won't lie. I definitely cried in my car every single day that I had the door knock. I hated it. I just, I wanted out of that, that life so badly. And I just perfected the top down method that my dad taught me and it, and it built our business extremely well. Now with things opening, you can go do that. You just never know. Just always be grateful for somebody's presence in front of you. The mailman, the FedEx. Oh my God, I've sold, I sold 10 houses to FedEx and UPS and Amazon drivers. Seriously. Yo, how did you get into this business? Do you own this route? Like genuine, passionate curiosity for others. That's how our podcast went from a bottom barrel podcast to a top 1% in the world in less than a year. This genuine curiosity that I have for people comes out in a very authentic manner. And I just really, I want to know about you. Like, tell me about your life. How did you get your FedEx route? Like, did you always want to do this? Do you have any dreams beyond this? Do you want to build your own company? Like, when you talk to them and get that from them, they're enrolled in whatever you got to sell. It's just, yep. it's basic enrollment versus sales. No one cares what you know till they know you care. And it yeah. always comes from curiosity and contribution, which is spot yeah. on. And look, let's not, let's not, let's not paint this like it's not awkward. It's damn awkward. It's very uncomfortable, but I just really want to know. I want to know yep. about you. And, and I'm not thinking about what you can do for me or how you can help me or how I can make money off of you. That was just my mindset. I mean, I was desperate for money, but I was teaching swimming lessons for 10 bucks an hour. So I could, I could eat ramen every night. Yep. Well, in the interest of time and, and next time, sorry, man, I, we're, we're definitely going to do some more stuff. So stay tuned. As you can see, Ian has tremendous value and is working very closely with several people in this office that have got to know him well. And um, I expect to be many, many more moving forward. And that again is his passion is, is giving back and, I'm um, really helping people live bigger lives. So really appreciate you, brother. Always. Uh, again, no, I appreciate you. For more of Ian. And um, again, guys, thank you all for being here. Um, stay tuned for a lot more value. Keep engaging because, right, environment matters, but it only matters to the extent that you're engaged. So thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a great day and make it happen. Take care.